It is not the conditions in the start of your life that ultimately determine where you end up through hard work, perseverance, and determination. You can achieve anything. In today's story, we are going to talk about the rise of Mr. Tony Tan Kekatong, the founder of Jollibee. It is also a story of finding opportunities amidst difficult times. But before we begin, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you'll be notified anytime we have a new video. Let's begin. Today, Jollibee is famously known as the most dominant quick service restaurant in the Philippines with over 1,200 outlets with presence in Southeast Asia, the Middle East, North America, and Europe. But its beginning was much more humble. For Tony, life did not start off easy for him. Born third of seven siblings, he was the son of poor Chinese immigrants from Fujian, born on January 5, 1953, and had to work extremely hard to get an education. His family migrated from southeastern China to the Philippines in search of a better life, and he became involved in the restaurant business from an early age when his father opened a restaurant. From a young age, Tony helped his family by washing dishes, bussing tables, and serving customers. Because all family members helped out at the restaurant, the success of the restaurant enabled Tony to pursue a degree in chemical engineering from the University of Santo Tomas. Upon college graduation, at the age of 22, he saw an advertisement for a franchise of an ice cream store called Magnolia Dairy Ice Cream, and he was intrigued. Tony and his wife visited the main Magnolia ice cream plant, and he saw that it was a great opportunity to support his future family. And it was in 1975 when Mr. Tony Tan Kakatong and his wife Grace decided to open two small ice cream parlors in Kubao, Quezon City. Now, there were many ice cream stores at that time with little differentiation. Ice cream stores were around every corner. So part of his strategy was to offer a cleaner store, better customer service, and larger scoops of ice cream. He learned very early on a business lesson, which was to give customers more than what they expected. And soon, the customers started asking for more. They wanted warm meals, so the family decided to start serving sandwiches and burgers. Soon enough, the hamburgers started selling more than the ice cream, and at that point, the founder decided that perhaps they needed to pivot strategy. Amongst the advice of management consultant Manuel C. Lumba, the family decided to convert the ice cream parlor into a fast food restaurant. Mr. Tony Tan Kakatong quoted, Yeah, maybe we should change our position now. From ice cream now, change it to a hamburger house. And in 1978, they decided to shift to hamburgers as their focus and to also professionalize their management. They realized they needed a more organized group, including store managers and trained people. They discontinued the Magnolia franchise and converted his ice cream parlors into fast food outlets. The change would prove to be difficult as they would have to deal with new people and new processes. Now, what would they name their business? Tony and his business partners came up with the idea that Filipinos are very busy all the time, yet happy and always smiling. Realizing that he needed a brand name and logo for his new business, Mr. Kakatong and his family decided on using a smiling red bee. They chose a bee because it represents hard work and honey represents the sweet things in life. The jolly prefix was meant to inspire happiness and enjoyment, hence the name Jollibee. 
they had some great initial success and the stores started expanding. But then all of a sudden, they heard some news that could almost kill them overnight. The largest multinational hamburger chain in the world that we all know of, McDonald's, decided to enter the Filipino market. Many of Tony's friends advised him to try to sell the business as soon as possible. In fact, they said, cash out while you still can. After all, how can a small local Filipino company with only five stores take on the leading multinational hamburger company in the world? In fact, McDonald's were the one that practically invented the hamburger. But this was the moment of truth for Tony, a moment that tested his faith in God, a moment that would test his hope and his ambition. Most people in his shoes would have sold out of the business right away. But you see, Tony was not like most people. He believed in himself, he believed in his business, and he decided to dream big. He quoted, I believe I can succeed in the hamburger business, even against the biggest player in the world. He truly, from the bottom of his heart, believed in himself and believed that he could accomplish anything if he stuck to his goals. He knew that Jollibee's customers liked their hamburgers and decided to stay in the business for better or for worse. In his deepest, darkest moments, when doubt started to creep in, he remembered the advice of his father, who was also in the restaurant business. His father quoted, In the restaurant business, it is the taste that counts. While the advice seemed elementary and basic, it was very important advice that Tony would never forget. After all, customers kept coming back. Tony was convinced that Jollibee could offer better tasting products than their competitors, even better than McDonald's. In 1979, Tony and his brother went to the US to study the fast food business they spent a couple of weeks looking at the equipment used, the retail outlets, the food served, and various other things, and they decided to copy many of those aspects and benefited from tested business practices and in doing so, avoided reinventing the wheel. When they came back, they started further expanding, one store at a time, slowly, at first. They waited until each store was making money, and then they would go on to build the next one. They never lost their leadership position with this strategy, as their customers loved their products. You see, even as McDonald's came into the scene as a major competitor to Jollibee, Jollibee was able to ultimately understand the Filipino market by incorporating Filipino sweet blend in their specialty and really understand what the Filipino market was looking for. Filipinos also like to smell everything they eat, which is the reason behind the Langhap Serap tagline that they incorporated. These were all things that McDonald's simply did not understand. One product that Filipinos loved, especially early on, was a chicken product that Jollibee introduced. It was a product called Chicken Joy, which was some of the tastiest chicken that you could find anywhere, and today it is one of Jollibee's best-selling items. But the early days of Jollibee were definitely not easy. They were very challenging, and Tony took plenty of risks and made plenty of mistakes. One early mistake for Tony was that Tony thought that roasted chicken would sell more for the Filipino customer rather than crispy fried chicken. But he was quickly proved wrong, and he switched back to crispy fried chicken when he realized his mistake. From there, Jollibee continued to expand its range of products from ice cream to burgers and sandwiches to rice and chicken meals up to their trademark spaghetti. In fact, Tony spent a lot of time to perfect the taste of Jolly Spaghetti 
and needed the help of his sister, along with extensive research and development to perfect the taste. Today, Jolly Spaghetti is an iconic part of the Jollibee menu. Due to some of the risks that they took, there were times when they would lose money. But Tony never lost faith. He believed that anything was possible and continued to have high hopes. In fact, he quoted, Our goal is to do what we can do as best as we can and not worry about the outcome. The outcome will take care of itself. Because of this mindset, it allowed Tony to take on risks and to rest easy, even if mistakes were made. It allowed him to keep his faith and to have hope every single day. Whenever he faced a challenge or an obstacle, he saw it as an opportunity to build new strength. This is still a mindset that he carries with himself today. Today, in 2021, Jollibee is a super successful business with thousands of stores worldwide. But even when it was a small five-store operation, Tony has always had big dreams. When Jollibee was just a little company, he remembered that his vision was to create the largest food company in the world. Some people back then thought he was overly optimistic at that time. But today, his dream doesn't seem so silly. And while his dream for Jollibee to become the largest food player is not yet realized, Jollibee has come a long way since its five stores. Today, it is a major dominant player in the food service industry. Combined, Jollibee Food Corporation controls over 4,000 stores. Here are some of the brands that Jollibee Food Corporation now owns or controls. Number one, Jollibee the original one that we all know and love. Number two, Greenwich, a fast food restaurant servicing Italian main and side dishes. Number three, Red Ribbon, a bake shop offering a wide array of baked goods and cakes. Number four, Chow King, a fast food servicing Chinese food such as noodle soups, dim sum, and rice bowls. Number five, Mang Inasol, a barbecue fast food restaurant chain. Number six, Burger King Philippines. They manage the operations of the American hamburger fast food chain in the Philippines. Number seven, Smash Burger, an American fast casual hamburger restaurant chain that they acquired. Number eight, Yong Hee King, a Chinese fast food restaurant specializing in noodles. Number nine, Hong Zhuang Yuan, a Beijing based Chinese fast food chain. Number 10, Tortas Frontera, a US based Mexican food restaurant. Number 11, Panda Express Philippines, a joint venture with the Chinese American fast food company. Number 12, The Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf an American coffee chain. And Jollibee Corporation is growing faster than ever today. When asked about the secret of Jollibee's success, Tony quotes, if you have to ask, the secret of Jollibee's success is sharing. We share our success with people. We give good compensation. We share any honor that comes our way. A lot of people do not share but in Jollibee, you share a lot with your people. Jollibee's strong focus on issues such as product development, operational excellence, customer service, marketing and promotion, social responsibility, and leadership helped it become the market leader in the Filipino fast food industry. Today, Tony is happy to share his advice with others when they ask him for life and business advice. In fact, he quotes, Dreams are free, so why limit what you aspire to become? But at the same time, you have to have your foot grounded in reality. Dreams don't come true on its own. You also have to put in the hard work and needed actions to make your dream come true. If you dream big and put your dreams into actions, you will inevitably make mistakes. 
but don't be scared to make mistakes. Just be quick in realizing the mistake and correcting them as best and as fast as you can. Learn from each mistake and it will not be a waste of your time. Tony Kakatong's entrepreneurial success helped him achieve the Ernst & Young World Entrepreneur Award in 2004, and Jollibee Group was the only Filipino company to make it to the top 20 of Asia's best employers list, ranking 16th. And as of January 2021, Forbes magazine ranked Tony Kakatong as the number nine richest man in the Philippines with his net worth of $2.4 billion. I'll leave you with one final quote from Tony. It is within our own power to make our dreams a reality. They are not created by anyone other than ourselves. I hope you enjoyed this video. Our channel focuses on inspirational and motivational stories that help you find your daily 1% improvement. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. So what dreams are you going to go after today? Drop a comment below and we'll be sure to address it in the next video. Until then, see you next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification to the right.